So, Arm, um, you, you and I both got to talk to Renee Haas uh, on earnings day. Um, I don't think I could have expected what came next. Yeah, I mean, it was an absolute just explosion. Let me, let me give you the data. But, you know, we, we talk about, you know, somebody does a beat, beat for the quarter, right? The beat top line, beat on the bottom line. They did a beat, beat, raise, raise, right? They raise for the quarter and they raise for the year. I mean, they absolutely categorically crushed it. And after hours, right, they were up 20 some percent, which was like, oh, my gosh, this is this is amazing. And then yesterday it ran up 50 percent. I mean, just crazy. And a little bit of background, you know, listen, we're not equities analysts, we're industry analysts, but I feel like we have a much better view about a company's long term prospects, market fit, uh, what they can do uh, to to go in and grab profitable market share. And, you know, therefore, I, I was very bullish on its growth opportunities of what the company could do that they came out, you know, people were like, there's no way they can sustain this stock went down, I, I feel vindicated. Uh, at this point, uh, for the amount of growth that I knew that that they had in them, and and it's a really simple story, right? You have all of the markets that Arm is is in getting an overall lift from AI. So the water line is going off uh, up across uh, data center, across networking, across PCs, across uh, smartphones, and then. Um, don't forget, I, I called the PC super cycle in the fourth quarter uh, in January. Uh, then you had you have segment share gain. So they're gaining market share. They're gaining market share in infrastructure, right? AWS, uh, you've got um, Azure doing their custom uh, Cobalt, right? You've got some folks uh, overseas doing that, and they're gaining uh, market share in, in automotive. Um, it's kind of, you know, split between kind of Intel and an arm but uh, right now the basis is some custom chips that were like MIPS based architectures so it's kind of weird but uh, work with me on this and then you've got content gains in areas like smartphones well what do you mean by that well um, you have some people you have small cores and you have big cores and then you've got v8 version cores and v9 cores Bigger cores, right? Like, look at MediaTek. They're putting these giant big cores in there. You pay more for the big cores than you do for the small cores. The other thing is that that ARM isn't just uh, CPUs, it's GPUs, it's memory controllers, it's interfaces, it's buses, uh, it's all that great stuff. And then you add on top of that this turnkey white glove um, offering that they do that says, hey, we're not just gonna, you know, throw some IP over the wall. We're we're gonna we're gonna offer you IP that has been taken all the way down and qualified in in a specific fab on a specific process. And we're gonna do some of the software testing and validation on this for you. And uh, you know, it, it was very clear that what Microsoft Azure was doing with Cobalt was exactly that. And I will bet that AWS Graviton uh, has a certain element of turnkey uh, as well. So here we are, you know, I don't know where they opened today, uh, pretty dramatic. You know, so they asked me on Yahoo Finance, um, Julie, you know, hey, is this, is this like real? And I said, listen, this is, it's rich, okay? Investors have to be putting in their products that don't exist yet, uh, maybe some new markets that I'm I'm unaware of to maintain. And I, I only say that when I look at the market cap of, let's say, a company like Qualcomm or a company like uh, AMD. And I'll, I'll end with this. They asked me, hey, Pat, what are some of the next, you know, AI chip plays, right? And, you know, my comment was, look directly, I mean, if, you want to make it simple, let's look directly at the companies who are ARM's customers and Qualcomm is ARM's biggest customer. So I would I would look I would look there for potential growth. Yeah, you you know, you called it out. 
I called it out. Um, it was it was really really interesting. You know, I'm not a revisionist history kind of person, but you know, I think Arm when it first came out was maybe trying a little too hard to have an AI story. And this was right around the IPO, but of course it was appropriate given what was going on in the market to try. But I think in the back of you know up their sleeve, they kind of knew that this was going to happen. So 23 was a really GPU centric year. Okay, and the thing about the GPU centric year was that there were some plays for CPU. It was substantial because again, the GPU doesn't run the you know it's not running the application. You still got to have those big CPU cores. That's the whole Grace Hopper. NVIDIA is the, if you wanted a proof point, NVIDIA gave you a proof point. They chose an ARM-based architecture for the, the, the you know, the CPU side of their, you know, high-performance computing uh, offerings that they were developing. Having said that, though, the obvious part is that what's the killer app? You know, this is when we get to, when we get to the Vision Pro, we can talk about this some more. God, it's dumb. All right. Um, but the, <laughs> but when you, when you, Sorry, but like the killer app for AI is not training. Training is the enabler of killer apps for AI. So you need all this horsepower in the data center so you can train all these models. And, you know, we're going to see the continuation of both these large models. I mean, God, did you see the news this morning? Uh, Sam Altman wants to go get five to seven trillion dollars. So he does apparently want to build fabs because there's no way you need seven trillion for chip design. Yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, God, I, I love going on these tangents. Our our audience expects us to as long as long as we're not droning and being stupid, you know. Okay, well, can't promise all of that, but some of it. Um, <laughs> but the point is, like, you know, you sort of see where this this all is heading. Well, the killer app of inference basically is heavily run on the CPU. It's heavily going to be de delivered on ASICs. It's going to be heavily delivered on CPU. And you know, by the way, this isn't new. Intel's been talking DL Boost for years, running on Xeon, you know, you know AI. You've seen, um, you know, uh, all the ASIC development from AWS. You've seen it coming out with Microsoft. There are some training chips, but a lot of these are inference chips. A lot of these are focused on running applications, Pat. And so ARM has a really big role to play in all the compute horsepower that's going to run side by side. So you got this really, really positive growth engine sitting behind it. And you got content, Pat. You got content in every. Uh, device, you got content in every vehicle that's growing. By the way, that's all more ARM. I mean, you're talking billions and billions, of course, that, you know, and, and, and of, of, of ARM based uh, product content going into all these different devices. And Pat, you called the AI PC surge, but I don't think people even realize how big this is going to be in terms of expanding the amount of spend with ARM. So they've got this kind of multifaceted tailwind that's going to be more content per device higher pricing on royalties because they're going to be doing more of the service delivery. And then on top of what you talked about, um, you know, with with uh, the additional um, subsystems, the CSS stuff that they're doing, which is also another revenue stream. So, of course, Renee was kind of lit up and glowing when we talked to him because he's like, we're just getting to like the beginning of this tailwind. But just yeah. to quite confuse people, this isn't like an ARM instead of NVIDIA thing. This is like ARM is the and play. And by the way, this tailwind is kind of holistic because it's going to be good for x86 too. And I know people kind of want it to be like one or the other, but like when this AI PC boom goes, it's going to go on all fronts. It's going to go where, you know, x86 PCs are going to have an AI PC and an NPU and going to run these same kind of apps. And so are the ARM-based versions. And you mentioned Qualcomm, one of the biggest winners. Apple, one of the biggest winners. I know, I know, it's hard to say it. Um, but, you know, and by the way, all these vendors that are creating different systems and the cloud providers, Pat, AWS, Microsoft, totally. Ampere and, and, and Google, uh, Ampere and Oracle, they're all going to be winners, too. And so the market, by the way, I got one prediction, final note on this topic. But the one reason people loved this was because for the very first time, these analysts could actually put something in their spreadsheet and start to figure out how much money ARM is going to make from AI. There's no other reason the stock goes up 50 percent or more in a day, except for the fact that people can now say, oh my gosh, let's see how they're gonna make money. Which was the question mark when ARM came out was, they don't make a lot on their licensing and their royalties. Well, they're changing their business model. And by the way, every company that comes out IPO, you can be sure probably has about six to eight quarters that they see in their, in their forward looking mirror that they know they can hit targets. And it's not always the case, but you can be sure SoftBank and ARM had a good idea of how they were gonna make this run. 
and they picked a good time to come out. So yeah, I had to, I, I had to throw out a truth bomb on uh, Yahoo Finance, basically backing up what you said. Actually, most inferences is run on a CPU, and I'm not saying on an SOC that that has an NPU. Uh, that that's what it's nobody good. talks about. But the problem is, is nobody can measure that, right? And, and, you know, Intel can't say, you know, X percent of this is run on this because uh, a CPU is the most diverse piece of silicon you can have. And you can't measure it, right? Yep. Anyways. Maybe we will. I mean, measures of merit are important. We should ask Ryan Trout. President you know, of I actually think this is more uh, in the line of your, um, your data business, to be honest. Well, well, I just mean like we should have some fun testing and competing all these different AI PCs and data center workloads. But yeah, you know, we got something for everybody. Yeah. You want the data? We got that too.